Doctors, what are the dumbest patients you've met? Pharmacist here. I had a woman bring in a literal sandwich bag unseparated, which she kept all of her meds in. She needed help seeing which meds she was low on or out of, and asked different questions about the medications. When she pointed to an Apoquel stating it was her blood pressure medicine, I immediately became concerned as to why pet medicine was in her bag. Also, why is she mixing all her meds in a bag in the first place? Only to find out she had been throwing her pet's meds inside of her bag of medicine. So Lord knows what she's been giving her dog or taking herself. I immediately stressed how important it is to keep medicine in its original container to protect it and herself, and to know the directions of how to take it. I've seen her a few times since then, and I'm glad to see that she's taken my advice. But how any pharmacist or doctor hadn't advised her on this before is beyond me. She took OP's advice, so I'm a little less inclined to say that she's dumb, but it's a pretty, uh, not great mistake just to throw all the meds. At first, I thought, like, maybe the containers were all thrown in a plastic bag. Sure, that's fine, whatever. Nope, loose pills just all mixed around in a bag and then pet medication thrown in there too good just yeah screw it why not story two i work in veterinary medicine and clients are absolute idiots who are convinced that they are the smartest people in the world it's amazing that pets actually manage to stay alive people will believe just about anyone else over the advice of their veterinarian their breeders their relatives their lawnmower the person bagging the groceries i had a client blind their cat with tea tree oil because they read about it on the internet Clients change their pet's medication dose for whatever reason, and that's really fun when it's insulin. Not following post-op instructions, causing their pet to eviscerate itself or blow the knee we just repaired. Feed their dog pot roast with garlic and onions as their bland diet for GI upset. And heck, last week I had a client scream at me because we didn't give her an exam room with a view. We don't have exam rooms with outside windows. Story 3. ER nurse with 7 years experience. The list is near endless. People with massive burns because they smoked in bed is not as rare as you'd think, but the one that got me the most was a guy who came in for chest pain and fatigue. EKG revealed he was having a really bad heart attack, activated OR cath lab for emergency stents to hopefully save the guy's life. They almost always access the patient through the groin for the procedure, so one of our jobs in the ER is to shave the patient's groin to prep them for the cath lab. We get the clippers out, we don't use actual razors anymore, and informed the guy we needed to shave him. He refused. No problem, we'll let cath lab do it once he's knocked out. Nope. Guy refuses to sign the consent for the stents because he doesn't want his pubes shaved. After trying to educate him, pleading with him, and contacting every goddamn lawyer the hospital has, the guy signed himself out against medical advice and went home. He would rather die than have his curlies shaved. We looked up his address and we weren't the closest hospital, so if he died at home, medics would take him to a different one. And, quite honestly, doubt he survived the day. Story 4. Work at a vet clinic. We get a lot of this sort of thing. Oftentimes with diabetic patients. One of the worst I've ever seen was an older owner come in with their extremely overweight diabetic dog. Owner says the dog has been slow, tires easily, and has been flopping around, which is odd for her. Doctor checks her blood glucose and it is so high, literally off the charts. Normal blood glucose for a dog is like 100 or so. The dog was beyond a thousand. We ask the owners how it got so high. Was she eating? Clearly she was because she was obese. Were you giving her the insulin? The owners proceeded to say that they think she's probably fine without it. She's a strong and hearty dog. Ma'am, your nine-year-old 80-pound Dalmatian is currently half alive on the floor because you didn't give her the insulin. How they kept the poor dog alive that long was astounding. Four stories in and 50% of them so far are about vets. I didn't see this coming, but honestly, it kind of makes sense. I don't own pets myself, but I kind of get it, honestly. There's a weird part of your pride or hubris, maybe, that's like, yeah, I know what's best for my pet. They're an extension of me, I know for sure. And I'm not saying it's right, trust me, it's not, quite simply. But I kind of get it, maybe. Let's see if there's any more about vets. Story 5. I work in orthopedic rehab. Had a patient with a common fracture of the wrist the doctor sent over since she was getting inexplicably stiffer and stiffer. I spent 17 sessions with her, 40-ish minutes each, one-on-one. -on -one. Instead of just bending her wrist, she would contort her entire body. She had a career, married, raised kids, and was a seemingly functional adult. I tried everything to have her actively use her muscles to move her wrist. In front of a mirror, videos of myself doing the exercise, her doing it, and trying to spot the difference of moving your shoulder versus your wrist. The last time I saw her, I even strapped her arm to a chair, and she didn't understand. She was just trying to move her wrist. 
I will never understand it. Was this patient able to move their wrist? Because this sounds like someone who, like, literally could not. If they just didn't know how, that's also kind of astounding in a way. I feel like something had to be mixed up in the, in the brain. I mean, on, like, a physical level. Because this is... I don't know, it doesn't read as dumb to me. It feels like there's something else going on. Story 6. Pediatrics nurse. The things that come out of patients' mouths daily is mind-blowing to think they're responsible for the welfare of babies and children. Two days ago, I listened to a conversation between the ICU doctor and a dad, who insisted that his newborn, his second child, by the way, needs to be given water. Tap water, in addition to his formula, because, and I quote, the human body is made up of mostly water, so how is a baby supposed to survive with no water? That's what they'd been giving the baby at home. We figured out the cause of the baby's electrolyte imbalances. Another parent brought their kid in who was severely underweight and had a tube for feeding. Upon further discussion, the parent said that when the baby cries or seems gassy, they just open up the tube and hold him over the sink and, once all that extra stuff comes out, he stops crying and feels better. They were feeding the baby, then immediately letting all the formula in his stomach run down the drain before he could digest it. Unrelated, but gives a little context, the child's full name was also a Star Wars character. Story 7. Dentist here. Once a stressed receptionist asked me to help her interpretate a call. I thought maybe the patient was speaking some foreign language? No. She just wanted me to confirm that the patient was asking for his property back that we took from him last year. Last year actually being four years ago, but I guess time flies. And his property being a tooth we sent to grind into slides for analysis. While explaining that it was impossible for us to return his tooth, he started going on about his rights and his property. And also, when I tell people to move their jaws to the side, they always ask, which jaw? Actually, not everyone, only adults. Children get the assignment. Story 8. I was in my last year of internal medicine residency, spending a month covering nights at one of our local hospitals. A nurse paged me around 10pm with the message, Can't place Foley in patient in room XXX. On my sign-out list, it said the patient was a 70-ish year old man admitted for advanced heart failure, and needed the Foley catheter to track urine output while the time was trying to diurese the fluid off of him. I head over to the ward this patient was on and ask the nurse what the issue was, and she said I just needed to talk to the patient about it. Okay, odd, but whatever. I stroll into the room and meet a pleasant older man sitting in his bed. The conversation immediately went... weird. Me. So what sort of problem were they having with the catheter? Were you having a lot of pain with it or something? Patient. Oh, no, nothing like that. They were just putting it in the wrong hole. The... wrong... huh? I'm not sure I understand. Well, you know how every guy has their pee hole and their seed hole? They were putting it in the wrong one. Sir, I'm going to need to examine your... member. It turns out this guy had hypospadia, which for his entire life he thought was just how a dong looked, because that's what his mom told him as a child. He literally had an accessory hole in his dong and just thought, yep, that's how a dong works. A pee hole and a seed hole. Hey now, this isn't a dumb patient. This is a patient with a condition that they just simply were never told of. They're not a doctor. If they're not told about it, how are they supposed to figure out? If they're told what is going on down there is perfectly normal, I can't imagine he was going around inspecting everyone, so... This isn't a dumb guy. An unaware one, maybe, but not a dumb one. Story 9. I've been a firefighter for a very long time. One of my most recurring thoughts is... How did this person survive to adulthood? I had an elderly patient at around 2am. The conversation went like this. What seems to be the problem? I don't feel good. Okay, what specifically are you feeling? I don't know. I just don't feel good. Are you on any medications? A bunch. Hands me a list. Have you been taking your meds like the doctor told you? No. When was the last time you took them? A few days ago. When was the last time you ate? A few days ago. Have you been drinking water? No. Have you been drinking anything? Pepsi. Okay, so you haven't eaten or taken your meds for at least three days and you've drank nothing but Pepsi for three days and you don't feel good. And another common issue is people having absolutely zero idea what their medical history is or what medications they take or why they take them. That one often goes like, do you take any prescription meds? Oh yeah, a bunch. Which medications do you take? Oh, I don't know. There's a lot of them. What do you take them for? Trying to get a sense of their medical history. Oh, a bunch of things. Are you a diabetic? Heart issues? Breathing issues? Cancer? No. Can I see your medications? Here. Hands me their weekly pill box. No, I need to see the prescription bottle. I don't know what these are just by looking at them. Where are the bottles? I don't know. I've heard of this actually being a relatively common thing, where people just think that any 
medical person can identify the pills just by looking at them. I, I don't know where that misconception comes from. I've never thought that. And that's not me trying to be like, I'm so much smarter than everyone else. I just genuinely don't know where that comes from. Like, yes, they're professionals, but they're not like pill professionals. They're just medical workers. That does not mean they know every pill you have. They might be able to get a few, but no, not a safe assumption. Story 10. Pharmacist here. Two come to mind, but I'm pretty sure there are plenty more I'm not thinking of. Woman comes in claiming her medication was making her vomit. Says she can't remember what it's called. I look up her profile and there's nothing recent. Just one off antibiotics and antifungal from almost a year ago. I ask her if it's over the counter and she said it was. She pointed me to the Monistat cream. I thought it was incredibly strange that a cream for her private parts was making her vomit. So I asked how she was using it. And she was taking it through the mouth. She says she would fill the plunger with the cream and shoot it to the back of her throat and swallow it so she wouldn't taste it as much as putting it directly on her tongue and swallowing. Okay, there's still more to this story, but I just got- I'm, I'm kind of stunlocked for a second. I need a moment. Girl, you did what? That's not how this works at all. Clear- there, there must have been instructions. There must have been very clear, obvious instructions on it, right? I don't understand why this would be your thought. Okay. Okay, I think I'm ready for the next part. Back to the story. Another time, my coworker, another pharmacist, got served a lawsuit while I was there. The patient suffered a fall and concussion, and it claimed it was because of her blood pressure medication, and the fact it was increased from 10 milligrams to 20 milligrams, and how she was not informed and passed out. She was suing the pharmacist, the pharmacy, her doctor's office, and the doctor themselves. It eventually came out in early discovery that she was at a rave, and had a blood alcohol content of 0.18 THC and MDMA in her system. The case against the doctor's office, doctor, and pharmacy itself fell apart right away, so she went all in trying to sue the individual pharmacist. The pharmacy's POS system confirmed that she checked, I declined pharmacist consultation at this time, so the case was eventually dropped. Alright, the second one got me a lot less, uh, baffled. Definitely a dumb patient, though. Like, a lot of these, I'm willing to be like, oh, but they're not medical professionals, or they learned, or they did better, that's not dumb. This one, this one's kind of dumb, I gotta be honest. You're trying to get a payday because you were high out of your mind, drunk, and you're blaming it on your blood pressure medication? Also, surely you should not be doing MDMA on blood pressure medication, right? Like, I am no doctor, I don't know the interaction there, but that just doesn't sound right. But seriously, the first one with the, the cream, really, that one really got me for some reason. Whew, alright, moving on. Story 12. Paramedic, and had this call while I worked on a rural fire slash EMS service. Call came in for an allergic reaction. Arrive at a rural farm and find the patient in the kitchen on the ground wheezing. Husband says she took sulfa, which she's allergic to. And after grabbing her BP, we hit her with epinephrine, same as an EpiPen, and Benadryl. Her breathing improves and she starts to be able to answer questions. So, you're allergic to sulfa? Yeah. And you took sulfa? Yeah. Was it mislabeled or in the wrong bottle? No. Was it your husband's prescription? No, it was for a horse. Was- wait, wait, wait. Did you say for a horse? You took sulfa prescribed for a horse? Well, I only took half. You took half because a horse is much larger than a person. Yeah. Okay, um, were you intentionally trying to hurt yourself? No, of course not. But you know you're allergic, right? Yeah, I just have a cold and thought it would help me breathe better. So you took horse sulfa, which you're allergic to, because you had a cold and thought it would help your breathing. I took half a horse sulfa. Sorry, half, gotcha. Let's go to the hospital. Story 13. Ophthalmology surgery tech. Glaucoma patient in her late 50s going blind despite drop therapies for the past six months. Pressure is consistently in the 30s and 40s. I ask her if she's using her drops regularly, twice daily, and she says yes. I ask as politely as I can if she's missed any doses in the past month. She says no. I ask if she's using them properly and she gets super offended. Asks me very rudely, Do I look like an idiot to you? Uh, no, but I just need to be sure. Sometimes patients think they're doing it right, but they can easily miss. Can you show me how you use your drops? She takes out her drop bottle, gives it a good shake. So far, so good. Looks up at the ceiling, also a good sign. Opens her mouth and swallows two drops. I got in trouble, but my OD backed me up and told her that's the stupidest thing he's ever seen in 25 years. She cried and said we were bullying her, and the drops burned her eyes, so she didn't want to put them in there. Since eyes, ears, nose, and throat were all connected, why did it matter where she put them? This is not how glaucoma therapy works. 
She needed a shunt implant, and we were able to save about 30% of her visual field, but yeah, drinking her drops and going blind. This one actually makes more sense to me than the cream one, because a cream obviously, in my mind, creams very clearly applied to affected area. Drops usually also, yes, but like, I don't know. There was a little more logic here. Was it wrong? Absolutely. But there was a little more. And at least liquids you consume sometimes. Like, don't get me wrong, it's still not intelligent. But it's better than the cream one still. Story 14. I'm a medical professional, but I have two really good ones from my ex-fiancé. Laugh at me all you want, this relationship was not my proudest moment. 1. At our baby shower for our son, he asked if we were going to pick an any or an Audi. I looked at him like he was insane. He started getting angry and just repeated the question louder until I shushed him and took him aside to explain to him that we don't choose how the belly button looks, it just happens. And 2. He had really bad eczema and went to the doctor for it who suggested oatmeal baths during flare-ups. He bought a couple boxes of Quaker oats, maple, and brown sugar and would dump the entire box packet by packet into the tub. It was a couple of weeks before I found the wrappers and questioned him about it. He told me, angry again, that he wondered why he was so sticky after getting out, and why the literal brown sugar was making his open wounds fester. I explained an oatmeal bath is not flavored oatmeal, and that he had to buy either plain oats or actual oatmeal bath packets. He was furious that I expected him to just know better. When I asked him why he picked maple and brown sugar, he said he didn't want to smell like strawberries or peaches after his bath. After our son was born and we had broken up, thank god, my son also had some occasional eczema, but not nearly to the same degree. Pediatrician recommended oatmeal baths and Guess what this idiot bought? He said he remembered the last time when he picked my son out of the sink and the towel stuck to him. When I started to scold him for being so stupid, he looked at me like I was the idiot and told me he only used one packet since we were still bathing the kid in the sink instead of an entire tub. Story 15. Vet nurse here. So it amazes me still how many people think their dogs and cats are female when they're male and vice versa. It usually starts with an admit. I can clearly see a dong and or huge balls and I look at the chart and it says the animal's name is Chloe. So it goes like this. Is this Chloe or another dog? Oh no, this is Chloe. We've had her six months now and we're worried about the fact that she's lifting her hind leg when she pees. Is she lifting her leg when she walks or moves or is it just one peeing? Oh no, just peeing. We're actually really worried about her. It's been going on since a couple of weeks after we got her. Uh, well, that's probably because she is a he. No, she's definitely a girl. No. See this? That's a dong. And see those? Those are testicles. They just give me a blank look. We should probably have a chat about taking those testicles off and changing his name. That was an actual conversation I had last week. Owner was not happy. Also, about a month ago, I had a male cat come in for a swollen abdomen. Turns out, he was a she, and she was pregnant. The father was her full brother. The owner thought the humping in front of the TV at night was a dominance thing between two brothers. I don't get how this one happens at all. Like, your pets don't wear pants. It's kind of obvious, isn't it? Maybe I'm the ignorant one because I've never had a dog or cat that I've actually owned, but I don't know, man. I would think it's not a secret. Story 16. As a midwife, I've had some doozies. When taking a patient's history at the start of pregnancy, I've been informed of some wild allergies. One patient claimed she was allergic to epinephrine because the one time she had it, it made her heart race. She couldn't tell me what the actual allergy that necessitated the epinephrine administration was. Another said she had an allergy to all opiates, as well as dimenhydrinate and diphenhydramine because they made her sleepy. I've had a number of patients page me in a panic worried that their water has broken. On further inquiry, I determined they've just had intercourse and it's seed. Not sure how they got pregnant without knowing that was the thing. I've also had more than one pregnant person ask me if they're allowed to have a bowel movement near the end of pregnancy or if it will give the baby an infection. Yikes. Call me crazy, but that last one is almost a fair question. Like, for being the most natural process of all, the human body seems to have a lot of trouble with, like, babies in general. That fact, plus the anxiety that comes with being pregnant, I don't think that's a dumb question. Just want to be super safe. Fair enough. If you're a medical professional, sure, you might be like, well, duh, but if you're not, then hey, you're afraid and you want your baby to be healthy. I'm not going to fault that one. Story 17. This was circa 1983. I'm a nurse, retired. Had this one guy in his early 20s that went swimming, hammered in a notoriously nasty lake in our area, like a don't drink the water kind of lake, without shoes. He stepped on an old beer tab and cut his foot open. Didn't go to the hospital or try to clean it at all for about a week. His girlfriend said he kept saying, it's fine, it's just a cut. 
when she pressured him to get seen about it. So, of course, he shows up in the ER with a foot that blew up like a balloon. Two and a half months in the hospital, foot completely laid open in surgery, doing debridement and packing on this foot, which I can honestly say after over 30 years in healthcare stands as one of the nastiest jobs I've ever had to do. And I'd been dealing with things like bed sores and open wounds from radiation treatments and cancer for about seven years at this point. Add to this that he was obnoxious, abusive, and when the opportunity presented itself, cruel. Other nurses, yeah, you know the type. They're everywhere. Hopefully not as open about it these days, but yeah. I had a student nurse that I was training who came running out of the room in tears and refused to go back in, and would not tell any of us what he said, but I can imagine. Finally get it cleaned out, responding well to antibiotics, tissue is granulating well, he gets sent home with antibiotics and strict instructions on how to care for it and to keep it clean and dry. The day he left the hospital, he went back out to the same lake, got drunk, put on nasty tennis shoes, and went swimming. Showed up on our floor again a week after being discharged. He lost the foot and his girlfriend. Look, losing a foot sucks, but I cannot say anything but deserved. Like, you were given specific instructions, sure, you screwed it up once, whatever. Maybe you just really didn't know, but there is no excuse, no excuse at all for doing it again. You are a fool, an absolute fool. Story 18. I'm a medical professional and have seen lots of dumb people, but we had a great one where an 80-something-year-old woman was in the ICU for an MI heart attack, and because she was acting odd, they did a talk screen, and it came back positive for coke. One of our doctors went in the room to talk to her about it, and she loudly proclaimed, I only did it because my husband had some. Our doc told her that's not a good reason. A little while later, her kids and grandkids, all probably about 20 plus years old, came in to visit. And when they figured out what was going on, you just hear them yell, Grandma! I got a kick out of that one. <laughs> Grandma living her best life. Another time when I was in college, we were all hanging out in a dorm room smoking weed with a bunch of people when a friend falls and starts having a seizure. No history of it, so we called 911. And the ambulance wanted someone to ride along with him, so I went. He was postictal, hazy from after seizure. And when they were questioning him in the ED, they said, So I understand you've consumed some marijuana tonight. Yes, sir. How much? $20 a gram. I proceeded to cry laughing, and the staff was completely confused, not understanding what he meant. Finally, I told my friend they weren't looking to pick up after work, they wanted to know how much you smoked. Once the staff realized, they got a kick out of it too. Maybe not totally in line with the prompt, but the last one is my favorite medical story to date while not working at the hospital. I love the idea that his first thought, I mean, obviously his brain just got shaken up pretty bad and he's high, so it's fair. But the first thought was like, this guy wants to score and I've got him. You know what, Mr. Doctor Man, I can hook you up. Nope, not quite it. Story 19. I went to a 911 call for sunburns at 2 a.m. This man had called at 9 p.m. but waited hours for us to show up. It was appropriately assigned the lower priority and got bumped by basically every other call all night long. So we showed up, I walk in and see this man sitting on the floor of his living room, looking completely distraught. I ask what happened. He explains he has a sunburn on his shoulder from being at a local water park earlier in the day. He says his pain is a 2 out of 10. His skin has a slight redness to the upper shoulders and has no blisters at this time. After what feels like pulling teeth, I managed to find out that he applied sunscreen once but didn't reapply it because I don't need it. Contextually, he seemed to be implying that his skin tone meant he wouldn't burn, and he's tried nothing for cooling the burn since he got home. All he has done was sit on the floor with his shirt off and make his wife get things for him. At this point, my primary differential diagnosis is that this is a man-child who has never had a sunburn, and I feel bad for his wife. But then she asks me if they can apply yogurt to it. So I explained about aloe vera. I suggested they get some and keep it in the fridge, and then ask if he wants to come to the hospital. You know, the thing that I might expect you want to do when you call 911 for paramedics, the people that take you to the hospital. He asks how they're going to help. Not if, not what they could do, but how. I explained that Emerge is likely not going to have much to offer beyond the Tylenol and Advil I've already offered him. And he's refused. And then they would tell him to rest until it feels better, which I've also said. I also told him they were going to expect him to wear a shirt in the waiting room, where he would be going directly. Like he would be walking from the ambulance to the main waiting room since he met the fit-to-sit criteria. This was not going to be wasting the charging nurse's time. He ended up staying home and timing-wise, it worked out well for me, since I was working an overtime 3pm to 3am shift. Story 20. I had a patient who had a bullet lodged in her leg. We had the surgeon come and assess her. Based on its placement, he suggested leaving it because removing it would cause even more serious danger. We discharged her. 
She immediately walked to the ER in the same hospital to complain of leg pain. She had prescriptions and wound supplies in her hand. They brought her back, discovered the bullet wound, and called for surgical consult. The exact same surgeon was on call and came to assess her and, guess what? Same suggestion. Leave it. We educated her extensively about never getting an MRI or the bullet will fly out of her skin. She returns a few months later at the sister hospital complaining of a headache. Admitted inpatient and, you guessed it, they did an MRI. The bullet ripped out and the MRI machine was down for almost a week. Story 21. I'm not a doctor, but I play one on TV. I worked for three months as a secretary in a urology clinic. I was regaled with a story about a middle-aged man with a severe perineal and scrotal rash. Guy tried so many creams. His primary care physician at one point prescribed steroids. And it's just getting worse. It was a toss-up between a urologist and a dermatologist, and he could see a urologist sooner. The day he finally comes into our office and he takes off his drawers, he apparently smells, and I quote, like a wet fart. Turns out this guy was barely wiping his butt, and the swamp butt mixture he was brewing between his booty cheeks was getting worked forward as he walked throughout the day and bathing his perineum and the back of his scrotum with crappy sweat, leading to an out-of-control, blistering, oozing rash. Story 22. This was around the late 90s in Chicago. Some unfortunate person jumped from a height and obtained crush fractures on his metatarsal and heel bones. He was accosted by random people and was running for his life. Since this was at a hospital around a very high crime area, most likely a drug deal slash gang related. He walked slash limped into hospital ER. Side note, I was a resident at the time and the hospital had several buildings. I had to cross the street for some consults and if it's dark out, there was a rule that you had to be escorted by security. The Chicago PD regularly had two to three cop cars parked at the hospital. It was Chicago in the 90s after all. Surgery was done with external fixators. The hardware was outside the foot to hold the bones in place and let it heal in a somewhat normal shape. Google external fixators for foot and ankle to see some pics. This person, one, used a hanger slash ruler under the dressing to scratch his skin silly. He had deep abrasions when we changed the dressing. Two, left the hospital against medical advice after two days. Three, called the office for pain med refills. Four, missed his follow-up appointments. And five, he dropped by our outpatient clinic six months later to drop off his meticulously cleaned external hardware in a Ziploc bag, pins, screws, etc. We never removed it. I suspect they loosened and all came off after some time. The human body is amazing. It goes on and can heal despite the crap we put it through. You know, this one is not too bad. And we're out of stories, so we gotta end on it. But like, okay, leaving the hospital against medical advice after two days, not the greatest. Calling the office for pain meds, yeah, that's silly. Missing your follow-up appointments and scratching under your dressing, that's, yeah, okay, dumb. But there were some really, really dumb ones in this thread. So you know what? This one's not too bad. Maybe it's just by comparison, though. Anyway, that's the video. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and even if you didn't. Although, you wouldn't be hearing this, but thanks anyway. I hope you have a wonderful day or night, wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one.